All right, hello everyone. It is Tuesday, June 27th. The time is 16.01 New York local time. I am out of the market for the day. wanted to give you a review of my trades. I wanted to uh, tell you some refinements that I think I can make, um, some mistakes that I made, and some refinements that I'm going to uh, implement into my trading going forward. So I'll tell you what I'll, I traded today. I will tell you the mistakes that I think that I made, um, where there was improvement available, and all that good stuff. So uh, first off, we will go over to crude oil. Um, I traded crude oil today. I'll go on our electronic trading hours since um, I did actually trade electronic trading hours. Um, I On my top step trader today, I was... Uh, I ended up, uh, I'll just give you the final number, um, I was sitting at uh, 153.861 coming into the day. We're now at 154.333, so up about $500 on the, on the top step, step two. Um, I've been funded before, so I get auto step two on top step. That is a bonus of top step. Um, coming into electronic trading hours. Um, I thought that crude oil was just going to have a like a 4% down move today. <laughs> um, I thought we were going to come take out these lows that we made on Monday, the 12th of June. Uh, might end up doing that on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I was also looking down at this long wick inefficiency um, that we, had, we made on Wednesday, the 3rd of May. So I got short pretty aggressively and we ended up uh, running into this Judas swing. Luckily, I only got short one uh, one contract. Um, as soon as the regular trading hours, I'll show you something. As soon as the regular trading hours opened up and we had our new day opening gap, or our, um, I would just call it RTH gap. I call these all RTH gaps. Um, as soon as on here on the 15 minute chart, I saw that we had um, an RTH gap here uh, I just drew it out into quarters. I saw that price was prospecting well below the 50% here on the 10-minute chart. Uh, see the 15-minute chart. Yeah, so well, respecting well below the 50% of that um, RTH gap. Then at that point, I was pretty confident that crude oil was going to come back. So I added on two contracts. Uh, I added on one at 69.42 and. Uh, I can't see the other one, but it's about 69.42 as well. So I ended up uh, cost averaging into the crude oil short. So I was holding a lot of drawdown for like a long time, and that was a mistake. So I want to tell you where I could have refined this trade. Number one, I was trading crude oil and natural gas, both to the short side, at the same time. And it is my opinion that going forward, I'm going to stick to one trade at a time. Uh, just so that I can baby the trade, that I can watch these volatile markets, um, you know, with a fine-tooth comb. So one of the one of the things that I have been doing, and I'll, I'll get you down. Well, we'll talk about this in a minute. Um, yeah. So I held over a dollar of drawdown on crude oil, but when I saw that we were coming back up into this uh, buy side inefficiency up here, and we were turning lower right on the open, I did get short, and so I. Uh, we ended up running our internal liquidity. So Tuesday, 27th June, our London AM low here, which came in at 67 spot 96. You could also just call that a New York pre-market low. Um, crude oil just worked its way down through this low today. So obviously, had I not had the original contract on and waited for New York Open today, or even um, just before New York Open, this would have been uh, quite a profitable trade, but as it turned out, it was mostly a scratch. So I didn't make a whole lot of money on this because I shorted once, took a lot of drawdown, added two contracts on, and then basically just covered it um, as it came back. Natural gas. Um, okay, so uh, again, I was trying to get short natural gas, took drawdown, uh, probably should have just let covered it, covered this first attempt at it the first time. Again, I, I was trading multiple products at the same time, so I wasn't really micromanaging these trades. And in these market conditions, in my opinion, if you're day trading, you do need to be micromanaging these trades. So I probably, again, will just stick to one trade at a time. Um, 
added on another short at two spot eight five six and then I just covered as we came down I saw that I was in some profit did not wait for it to make its PM break through the low um, trying to get long again uh, at the very end of the day on natural gas ended up taking a small loss on this position overall so natural gas was you know it was a mostly break even day so you're going to see just a little bit of a mixed bag um, I had the right idea on natural gas so if I'll tell you here on natural gas let's hide the drawings let's hide the executions um, natural gas very much looked like it was getting ready to shoot lower for me um, but I got in a little bit early we were just working this new week opening gap right here that I'm highlighting with the cursor we've been working up and down and all around that new week opening gap for a long time and as I saw that we were coming back down through it again I got a little bit uh, I got a little bit hasty tried to get short before uh, 730 my time before 830 New York local time so it was mostly scratch um, all right um, I traded also I tried to take a couple shorts on the 30-year bond again I was early on this um, I was early by you know, about an hour um, you know you can see that my entries the general theme with my trading is that I'm early right so the I'm usually able to see what the market is about to do but I'm usually when I'm actually trading um, early by a few hours early by 30 minutes because um, the the 30 year bond was our bearish leader over the 10 year bond um, natural gas you know coming in the pre-market had already shown a willingness to go down so that's why I got short there crude oil I saw that crude oil again came up into our regular trading hours gap so I uh, you know had a feeling that it would go down and it and you know predictions are kind of it's kind of like trading horseshoes right or playing horseshoes um, if you really want to make the big money in, in day trading you you got to be pretty precise uh, very precise and if you're a couple hours early with your overall idea you're still not making the kind of money that you want to make so it takes an immense amount of patience I'm not quite there yet myself um, I did have the right idea that crude oil would go down I did have the right idea that natural gas would go down um, tried to get cute with a couple of longs here um, didn't work I mean yeah it was a small loss um, so you know but ideas don't pay the bills trades pay the bills so yeah I was right that crude oil was going to go down I was right that natural gas was going to go down but I was uh, my timing was off and I think that my timing would have been us uh, you know more on had I only traded one of these at a time just picked one and just let that trade play out th throughout the day obviously you know crude oil was down dollar fifty five cents today it's ten dollars uh, it's ten dollars a tick so had you held the full movement of crude oil today that's one thousand five hundred sixty dollars let's say the top step trader 150k account right now I can trade 10 contracts I'm not gonna get anywhere near 10 contracts on a single trade but I might get to three so you know this really should have been a forty five hundred dollar trade and this should have been probably my only trade for the day if we're being perfectly honest um, so it's just something to move forward with uh, Dow well I did try to trade the Nasdaq and you're gonna sit here and you know you're gonna be like damn Reese you got long at like nearly the bottom and didn't let it run yeah that's basically what I'm telling you uh, I got long at 14,908 covered at uh, 14,927 obviously had I let this trade run throughout the day that that would have been a massive Nasdaq trade again um, I'm probably dividing my attention up uh, between too many trades so this was a scalp it was okay it was a 19 point scalp it wasn't the hundred over hundred point runner that it should have been or 200 point runner um, you know I'll show you the regular trading hours here on uh, on the Nasdaq make this box uh, make this box blue 
can see that we had our regular trading hours gap come in here. Price was uh, drawn to that inefficiency three times before it shot up and, and when it sought liquidity. So I was just playing that, playing that a few times. Um, I think the, the first short I took here was a 12 point win. The second short was a 15 point loss. Third short was a 19 point win. Um, yeah, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you here and just say that I'm dividing my attention up between too many products. Well, not too many products. That's not correct because many of you are going to take what I'm saying here and think that you should just literally only have one product on your on your the right side of your screen. That's too much. So everything in day trading is a balancing act. So just because I'm not there yet does not mean that I'm going to and this is something that many of you need to need to recognize that you're doing yourself. Just because you have one day that's a break even day or you have a big losing day doesn't mean you literally throw out your whole system that you've been working on and you just throw the whole baby out with the bath water and you just throw it away. Probably going to make that a video. You refine over time. Okay, it's like refining crude oil. You refine the hydrocarbons that come out of that come out of the well bore. It gets sent through the pipeline, it gets to the refinery and then it's refined into uh, distillates and then it's shipped it's shipped uh, shipped off to your distribution centers and then it's you know hauled away to your gas stations and wherever the petroleum is going to be used or you know refined further into jet fuel so uh, taking taking that crude oil example you want to refine your trading into jet fuel highly refined crude oil uh, highly refined hydrocarbons, my friend. That is what your trading should be. I am from the great state of Texas. I have worked in the oil and gas industry, and yes, that is how I think. Uh, so, if you are Canadian, or if you're uh, of the, you know, a little bit more of the liberal political persuasion, uh, and you don't like crude oil, then um, you might not like that analogy. Uh, but if you have worked in oil and gas, you know, it comes out of the well bore as hydrocarbons with a bunch of water and other byproducts, and then it's refined over time. The highest grade refining is jet fuel. So you want your trading to be jet fueled. I mean, you want your system to be jet fuel. So you learn the basic model of liquidity and inefficiency. You learn, uh, so go on my channel watch the video that is my banner video ICT inefficiencies explained ICT concepts algorithmic trading go watch that learn about inefficiencies learn why you should be flicking on your regular trading hour sessions I'm not aware of other products that have RTH I don't think trade of eight has it on yeah trade of eight doesn't have regular trading hours as far as I know so if you're using trade of eight their desktop platform or their web browser I'm not aware that Trade of Eight has regular trading hours. Um, I don't even think that Trade of Eight will let you set the will set the uh, time zone to New York if you are not in New York. So, again, this is why I use TradingView because I want to see my regular trading hours gaps. I want to set my time to New York. I like the look of the chart. Many of you that are using other platforms, Ninja Trader, Quant Tower, um, Thinkorswim. I'm not sure if those if those platforms allow you to switch to allow you to switch your time zone, allow you to switch to regular trading hour session. I don't believe that Trade of Eight does. I could be wrong on that. You know, comment below if I'm wrong on that. I'm, I'm missing it. Um, okay, so I tried to trade uh, Nasdaq, and then at the very end of the day, I saw that the uh, the YM was our bearish leader. So you know that I'm always looking at the dollar index. Um, I'm always looking at a relative strength analysis, so which products are leading us to the upside, which products are leading us to the downside, which products are reticent. So, for example, it was basically an up day for stocks. Um, if you go watch my video on ICT tapering practice number nine, I told you that stocks were probably going to be up today, and they were across the board. But, you know, so, when you're day trading, you're refining into jet fuel, right? You're refining your refining your entries, refining your exits, refining your strategy into jet fuel. And it takes time to do that. And so you're refining your hydrocarbons that you're pulling out of the well bore in your um, hydraulic fracture and your horizontal well comes up through the well bore. Over time it gets refined into 
the whole lot of work that I don't understand. It is refined into jet fuel. And that's really what you want your uh, day trading to be. You want to have a system that you initially you know, work with. You want to have a model that you're working with. I recommend inefficiencies and liquidity. I don't really know how. It's nothing else has ever, you know, shown results for me. So I'm going to ignore the morning trades that I tried to took. I tried to take on the uh, YM. I'll show you at the very end of the day on my top step trader um, why I took the shorts up at the very top here. Okay, so why did I choose the YM? Well, our YM was our bullish laggard today. So all the products were green on the day. All of the stock indices were green. Russell 2000 led the way. Um, the YM was our bullish laggard. So if the YM is reticent to move higher while the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ are moving higher, sorry, I guess I would say that tech was probably our leader. Earlier in the day, the Russell 2000 was higher percentage-wise than the NASDAQ. But our, our clear bullish laggard was the YM. So very end of the day, I expect there to be some retracement uh, because we'd come up into this prior uh, buy side inefficiency. You can see I'm highlighting with my chart. I am on regular trading hours. Um, so I basically just took our old inefficiency here and drew it into quarters and you can see that we respected, we closed below the 50% of that. So as I saw that we came up into a prior inefficiency that had been respected, uh, I was piling on the shorts thinking that we were going to go lower. Obviously it just kind of consolidated against me. Um, and so at the very end of the day, before top step would automatically close out my positions, I took a spot that I thought was a reasonable cover. Um, covered the first four contracts at 184. Uh, covered three contracts at 185. I let one go to 169. Okay, very end of the day. I didn't want to see this thing trade back up again. Really wanted to lock in my profits. So that's why uh, you'll see that the first seven contracts came off early. The last one contract I let run below this low here that we made at 169. Very end of the day, market on close, we did run that low. Um, again, if you want to go watch about why new highs and lows are formed, how the CME match matching algorithms match aggressing orders with uh, resting orders and how market makers make their money, um, you should go watch my video on CME matching algorithms. You'll need to look through my video list. It's the video on CME matching algorithms. We know that there's going to be a uh, influx of market on close orders at the end of the day. So if at the very end of the cash session, you know, it is highly likely that you are going to get a move below a short term low or a move below a short term high. As you get an influx of order flows that, of order flow that comes in, um, it's going it, to it's going to be illiquid for the most part so a lot of your resting liquidity is not going to be there at the very end of the day so it's going to need the CME's matching algorithms are going to need to match all the way down to your lead market makers who are sitting below a, a short term low if you don't know any idea what I'm talking about again you don't know what the CME matching algorithms are how the CME uh, uses FIFO and pro rata matching pro rata matching to match uh, aggressing orders with resting liquidity, you need to go watch my video on CME matching algorithms. So uh, that was that. Um, okay, let's talk about just short and sweet, um, what I think I can improve on, how I can refine my day trading into jet fuel, step-by-step -step process. Number one, you want to pick, number one, I, I do believe that you do need to be watching multiple products. So using your relative strength analysis in order to hone in on the futures product that is most everything is probabilities okay everything is probabilities so you want to get the the right time of the day the right model which is inefficiencies and liquidity um, you want to use your relative strength analysis to pick the right product for your side of the marketplace so let's say that you're getting long you confirm that if the dollar index is moving lower then all of your risk assets uh, should be moving higher, right? They move inverse with the dollar for the most part. So let's say that the dollar is moving down. Um, you might be interested in one of your Forex products here, like the Euro, for example. So you're like, all right, dollar's moving down. Uh, looks like Euro's leading the way. Your analysis doesn't end there. 
your analysis goes to, okay, Euro's leading the way to the upside. I want to enter in on an inefficiency. Um, I want to enter in on an inefficiency. So I'm going to wait for the Euro to come back into an inefficiency. At that point, I'll enter in on a limit long and then let the trade play out for a few hours. Could be 30 minutes, could be a few hours, could be the whole day. Um, That is how refinement is done. So as the... Um, let's. I'll give you an example of how you could have taken the NASDAQ long today, how you could have been long on this NASDAQ, and why this really, you know, any one of these trades that I took, whether it was the crude oil short at 69.42 or whether it was the NASDAQ long at 14,908 spot 50, either one of those really should have been my only trade for the day. They would have made about the same amount of money um, depending on the number of contracts that I put on, uh, crude oil, you know, it could have been natural gas. These all made big moves today, okay? They all had big ranges, so either one of these could have been your trade of the day. Okay, let's talk about how you could have made the, the NASDAQ from top to bottom, how the NASDAQ could have been your trade of the day, and how you could have captured the full amount of this range. All right, so First off, you would want to, as soon as the market opens, you flip on your regular trading hours. The algorithm, trading algorithms, um, are going to reference the regular trading hours as soon as, as soon as it opens. Okay, you're going to get a rush of initial volatility in the market. Trades by Matt trades the open. That's you know that's fine. I don't. I I will wait for at least 30 minutes until after the open. At least 15 minutes. I'm not trading literally the open. Okay, I'm at least letting 15 minutes come past the open. All right, preferably 30 minutes. All right, example today of how you could have uh, could have ran this the whole daily range. Number one, see that NASDAQ was up on the regular trading hours. Dollar index was going down. So intermarket relationships were always starting with the dollar index with everything. Dollar index, we had planned for it to go down today, so we already had it in our head that risk assets were going to go up. The NASDAQ had formed a nice regular uh, trading hours gap here, opening gap. We know that's an inefficiency. We know that price is going to be drawn to it. Ergo, why you see that I did have a long here. Um, at that point, uh, we get... we. We look to we look to see you know if the Nasdaq has already shown a willingness to go higher. Right here on the open, we had shown a willingness to go higher, but not only that. If we look at our regular trading hours, the best longs are taken after stops are taken. So we see that we had uh, sell stops taken here. All right, with this candle that we had on Monday, the 26th of June. Uh, let's check our rec- electronic trading hours. You can see that uh, yeah, so we we had sell stops taken. Okay, so after institutional side sell stops have been taken, we're already at that point, along with our dollar index analysis, which is confirming relative strength analysis, dollar index is confirming that we're probably going higher on risk assets. Uh, NASDAQ specifically, the sell stops had been taken. And then, okay, NASDAQ right on the open had shown a willingness to go higher. Okay, opening gap. Now we're refining further in, further our jet fuel. We're, tr- we're refining our raw hydrocarbons into jet fuel. Um, sell stops have been taken. Dollar index was going down. Risk assets were probably going up today. Uh, waiting for the opening volatility come in. We're not trading the opening volatility. Trades by Matt can do that. I'll leave that up to him. I'm not trading the opening volatility, at least not yet. Um, Look down at our opening gap. That's an inefficiency. We always want to enter in on inefficiencies. We're trying to enter in on inefficiencies. So go back to our regular trading hours. There it is, clear as day, visible regular trading hours gap. If you didn't see the regular trading hours gap, there was a small sell side inefficiency that would be visible on electronic trading hours as well. Highlighting that with my cursor. Um, but let's see that you you know you did do the right thing. You turned on your uh, regular trading hours. Okay. At that point, we get long. Um, as we see that price comes back down, it again respects the same regular trading hours gap. We know beforehand that these inefficiencies can be reclaimed, meaning that they can be traded into multiple times. As soon as you see that the NASDAQ forms this candle right here, okay, right here, and even as we form an inefficiency coming higher, we're, we're displacing higher, we're forming inefficiencies, breakaway inefficiencies higher. 
At that point, you could add on a second and a third contract, very confident that we are, we're going to go higher. Now we have the entry mechanism, and now we want to look at our exit mechanism. So draw on liquidity is our exit mechanism. We want to look for liquidity targets. Regular trading hours, we see that we had Monday, 26th of June, uh, New York AM high, and Friday, 23rd of June, PM high. There's going to be a lot of liquidity sitting above 15,155. We didn't make it all the way to the target, okay? Did not make it all the way to that target, but it got you the directional. There was our liquidity resting up there. So that's basically how you refine this into jet fuel, is were stops taken? Yes, stops were taken. Was there an inefficiency on the open that you could enter on? Well, yes, there was. Was the dollar index moving down? Yes, it was. So should our risk assets be going up? Yes. Well, which of our risk assets here on the stock indices is leading the way? For the most part today, it was the Russell. So you could have taken the same, the same, uh, the same contracts on the Russell. Um, but let's say that you got in on the Nasdaq. Okay, risk assets are probably going to be up today. Dollar index is going down. We get long. All right, what what is our target? What's going to be our liquidity draw? Well, two draws on liquidity. Number one, regular trading hours. We know that that that's going to be a draw on liquidity, right? There's going to be lots of liquidity up in the red box. Other draw on liquidity is this. Uh, buy side inefficiency right here. Get in on the trade. Go play golf. Go play. Go go sleep, or just watch the trade happen and basically just shoot up there. Uh, virtually no retracement. A little bit of a retracement during lunch. So that's how you do it. Um, my advice and what I'm going to be doing going forward is just managing one trade at a time. Uh, it has been my general experience with my day trading that um, I am early on these moves. Uh, I'm. I'm getting pretty good at seeing where price is going to go. Uh, I want, I'm not trying to say that to be arrogant. Um, I'm getting pretty good at it, okay? But I'm not refined yet to the point where I'm catching, I'm catching thousands of dollars worth of moves. Part of the reason is because even though I know I should be looking at multiple products in order to pick the right one to trade, once you're initiating a trade, you really need to baby the trade. You've got to micromanage the trade. If you're familiar with video gaming, then you would call this uh, micro. <laughs> you're microing your trade. Uh, so I'm going to take it one trade at a time from this point moving forward. If you're looking at my trade reviews going forward, you know, maybe one trade per session, one trade per time. Um, that does not mean some of you are still not going to get my point here doesn't mean literally eliminate all 15 of your products. You, you don't just like toss the baby out with the bathwater. Just because I'm telling you that I'm refining my process, okay? My process is pretty fucking good, all right? I'm looking at a lot of things that really do drive the market, inefficiencies, liquidity, and, and intermarket relationships, especially with the dollar index. Those are all things that actually drive the markets and do have um, a salient impact on the markets. That being said, that does not mean because I tell you that I'm, I'm going to manage one trade at a time, that doesn't mean that I'm going to throw out all my freaking products and just try and literally only trade one product. That's not what that means. You still have to use your intermarket relationships. You then go and pick the most probable, the bullish leader, the bearish leader. That's your relative strength analysis. You can't toss the relative strength analysis out with the, with the bathwater. You know, a lot of this is it's refinement. Okay, it's finding a model that works and then it's refining it. I have a model that works. Liquidity, inefficiency, intermarket relationships, preferably at the setup times, preferably at the setup times. That's it. That's my model. It's that simple. It's, it's not difficult to understand. That's the model. I'm refining it now by saying that I'm going to focus and hone in my contracts on one trade at a time. Okay? Electronic trading hours on the Australian dollar last night. You can see I was long. Ended up taking some losses trying to long it again. That's what I'm trying to tell you folks. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If you are still using, um, I've got good friends that I talk to um, on Discord, people who message me, and they'll still send me charts with the volume profile all over the place with the big volume bars on the right side of the chart, and they'll still tell me that their third-party software is where it's at. My friends, I'm set in my ways. So if you want to comment in the channel box below, 
that you yourself are still using third-party software or that you're using indicators and you're finding some profits with it, that's fine. I want you to make money. I am set in my ways. You're not going to convince me to change from what I'm doing now. At this point, I'm just refining my system into jet fuel. That's it. I'm only refining what I've already told you the framework is. So you can preach at me all day about your third-party software, about about this and that and the other, and about your indicators and about why you cover up price and all this and that. I've, I'm already set in my ways. This is it. This is boom or bust. It's either going to work for me or I'm going back to being an attorney. That's it. All right? I found something where I'm consistently entering in very close to actual lows, very close to actual highs. There's no way that I'm doing this by random chance. The, the only thing that I will say is, you know, I'm still not there refined to where I'm, you know, raking in cash. But I can see that the framework that I'm using is working. So I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and, and start throwing up a bunch of volume profile now on my chart. We've been through this. You can see the volume and where the high volume is and the low volume is using the price data. So we've been through that. I'm not going to cover it again. Um, that is it, my friends. That has been a trade review and a discussion of refining your trading strategy. It is uh, Tuesday, June 27th. The time is 16.33. If you would like to try uh, day trading yourself, if you're interested in a prop firm account, um, I have my Top Step Refer Friend and Apex Trader Funding in the referral box below. I am not particularly partial to either one. Um, I will tell you that here's here's my opinion. Right, I'll, I'll give you my brief opinion on Top Step and Apex. Um, Top Step does appear to be more geared towards actually training you to be a professional day trader. Apex really gives you no framework, but it is cheaper. So... There's a, there's a balance there. Top Step is more expensive. But although the scaling plan that Top Step uses might piss you off, it's showing you risk management. It's trying to teach you risk management in an automated system. Top Step does have more client support that I have found than Apex does. But it's a more expensive product. My Top Step Combine was $300. Apex with a 90% sale off right now is... Oh gosh, the 300k account would only be $120. Use my affiliate link. Um, Top Step is more expensive, but it's more geared toward actually. Be, it is more geared geared towards becoming a professional day trader. Apex really just throws you out there, and um, good luck to you. Now, if you already have a system, if you're already profitable, I would say probably Apex, frankly. But then again, both are going to pay you, so it's not really that big of a difference. If you have found no success in day trading, I would go with Top Step because number one, it's going to teach you more risk management. It's going to teach you a scaling plan, basic fundamentals of, of day trading. So I, you personally, I think that if you're trying to become a professional day trader, Top Step is more geared toward the, towards that. Uh, but that being said, Apex is cheaper. So in my mind, looking at the economics of that, about the same overall. Top Step probably wouldn't like me saying that, but I'm giving my fair opinion. Uh, as long as they both pay out, Top Step does pay out faster. Okay, it pays out in five days instead of ten. So I would say probably a better payout policy on Top Step. It, it can get you paid faster. Um, all right, that's my opinion on that. I'll probably talk about the two evaluation prop firms. Uh, I'll talk about those in a separate video at some point. Um, all right, that's been a trading review. We will get back with you later. Use my affiliate links. Uh, TradingView, a refer a friend, is my third link. Highly recommend TradingView over all the other platforms. Uh, if you want to use TradingView Pro, um, I have a refer a friend is in my description box. Bye.